In this paper, I'm going to be talking about musical adjustments to synagogue liturgy in Turkish Jewish life from the Ottoman era to the present day. Musical adjustment in this context is a historic process of radically negotiating complementary and competing identities, religious, national, linguistic, aesthetic, to name a few. I'm interested in the various positions that congregants and spiritual practitioners, rabbis and chazanim or synagogue cantors, take to justify or critique the choices they make, illuminating ways that Turkish Jews have wrestled between tradition and experimentation and the, for the forces compelling them to choose or struggle over choosing one or the other. The ever-increasing mobility and transnational identifications of today's Turkish Jews animate and enrich the practice of Judaism in Istanbul with new inspirations and expectations. They mirror the musical trajectories of the Sephardic Jews who arrived in Ottoman lands following their expulsion from the Iberian Peninsula in 1492. More than just music is implicated in these transformations. They introduce alternative ideas about education, language, communication, citizenship, the building or breakdown of community, and Judaism itself. Such changes may be welcomed or harshly critiqued. They complicate local customs that, despite being in decline or of limited relevance, still matter to people. I argue that one outcome is a historically malleable and mobile Turkish Jewish identity that inspires broader understandings of how Judaism should be practiced in Turkey today. When Sephardic Jews first arrived in Ottoman lands, they very quickly adopted the musical practices of their new neighbors, particularly makam, the melodic dimension of Turkish and Middle Eastern music. The Turkish-Jewish relationship with makam musics represents a legacy of Ottoman Jewish compositional creativity stretching back to the mid-16th century. The sound of makam embodies a time in Turkish Jewish history when dozens of chazanim and Jewish singers gathered in the dawn hours of the Sabbath, Shabbat, to sing the maftirim, paraliturgical hymns organized into suites based on a single makam. Those chazanim would depart from their maftirim sessions for morning services at their respective synagogues, and their musical recitations had to be sung within the same makam or scale they had just sung in the maftirim. Moreover, the congregation would expect that of them and know whether they were listening to the right makam. Here's a brief example of the chief chazan of Istanbul's Jewish community, David Sevi, chanting uh, a prayer in an, in an improvised style using a makam called Rast. pleased with his performance. <laughs> when Hazanim of the Ottoman era adapted secular melodies to Hebrew religious texts, there were frequent, sometimes scandalous incongru incongruities between the original Turkish lyrics and the Hebrew. I'll give an example of Pirkei Avot, a compendium of rabbinic wisdom on how to live a principled life studied each spring in Jewish communities throughout the world. In Istanbul's Jewish community, this study is accompanied by the performance of an entire setting of the Talmudic text to pre-existing Turkish classical melodies. The passage, Al Shaloshah Devarim, translates as, 
the world stands upon three things, on Torah, on service, and good deeds, and on loving kindness. And I'll give you a brief rendition of that prayer now. Turkish melody adapted for this key Jewish aphorism is Hab Gal Yare Girdim Arzichin Ahvalimi by late 19th century Ottoman composer Giriftzen Asimbe. The Turkish words translate as I crept into my lover's room to get my point across. My dreams are shrouded inside your lips. Let me come collect them with my own. Uh, and I'll give you a, a taste of the Turkish version. Another example, reflect upon three things and you will not come to commit a transgression. Know it is above you, a seeing eye, a hearing ear, and all your deeds recorded in the Book of Life. This cautionary text is set to a beste, an Ottoman compositional form by the 18th century Ottoman Greek composer Ilya Efendi. Bir dil olacak ol şey hüsnün divanesi. A rough translation of this Ottoman text is as follows. My heart will love like a maniac, that woman who is the sultan of beauty. That beloved will show no mercy to her lover who is mad for her. So contrafactum, the setting of existing melodies to liturgical texts, was commonplace in the Ottoman era, an opportunity for Chazanim to express artistic freedom and provide opportunities for communal pleasure through, fami through familiar musical material. One might argue that the repertoire's accessibility could enable memorization and retention of the text by participants, but through musical means. However, rabbinic arguments raged against the use of such melodic content in prayer as far back as the earliest accounts of Jewish experimentation with Ottoman musical aesthetics in the 16th century. Rabbis throughout the Ottoman period asserted that certain music had the capacity to distract the person engaged in prayer, potentially leading them toward immoral thoughts and actions. Some argued that all Turkish musical elements should be excised totally from, the tur from liturgy. Others permitted makam, but critiqued the use of amorous tunes and other adaptations of pre-composed repertoire. Often these remonstrations were somewhat nebulous and contradictory, as if the rabbis understood that they were fighting a losing battle against the demonstrable and unavoidable power of Turkish makam in the music culture of Turkish Jews. One particularly damning objection to makam in Jewish ritual comes from the Kaf HaChaim, a, a collection of interpretations of Jewish law, ethical literature, on how to lead a more perfect spiritual life by Rabbi Chaim Palachi, chief rabbi or Chacham Bashir of Izmir from 1856 until his death. He served during the Tanzimat period of Sultan Abdul Majid I, a time of sweeping westernization and socio-political reform in the Ottoman Empire. In the following passage, he presents a devastating rebuke to the Hazanim and musicians that employ makam in liturgy, specifically citing one portion of the Shabbat service called the Kedushah, as well as the Kaddish uh, prayer as out of bounds. He writes, if only they would warn poets and singers not to sing Kaddish and Kedushah in the garb of the nations or non-Jews using the makam, one who knows it will come to bad thoughts and so the leader sins and causes others to sin. This is an offering with an inappropriate intent, and it will not be acceptable. 
That which is impure cannot enter the hall of God, and its presence causes goodness to be absent. Regarding this, it is written in Psalms 39, verse 4, Fire burns when I speak. Concerns in religious Jewish circles over the corrupting potential of secular source material in religious contexts continue in Turkey, and it is important to note how language is implicated in these conversations. <coughs> For example, most Turkish synagogues include a tune in Makam Segya during the Shabbat morning service called Lael Baruch, Neimot Yitenu. The melody forces the singer to utter several words incorrectly, stressing the wrong Hebrew syllables. Although most Turkish chazanim continue to lead their congregations in this melody on Shabbat, the chief chazan of the community, David Sevi, who we just listened to, has long forbidden its use at his synagogue because of its poor setting of the text. He once remarked to me that the hallmark of chazanut is to read the words of prayer with the utmost precision, and that prioritizing music at the expense of text is a regrettable choice. Another more contemporary example took place one chilly afternoon in January in Istanbul. My friend and I sat at a table in one of Istanbul's only kosher restaurants, finishing our lunch with Moshe Palachi, a devout Jew, an expert in makam, and a direct descendant of Haim Palachi, the chief rabbi. The conversation had shifted to music, and Mr. Palachi began to sing an improvisation on another makam called Hijaz. Sitting at the next table was Shimon Asayas, the older chazan of the historic Italian synagogue known as Cal de los Francos in Istanbul's Galata neighborhood. Mr. Asayas rose from his chair and moved to our table, sitting down as Moshe Palachi completed his improvisation. Mr. Asayas proceeded to share his own musical setting of a Sabbath prayer called uh, the Kedusha. His setting was for the Nakti Shach, the introductory text of the Kedusha sung during the Shacharit or morning service on Shabbat. Perhaps you'll recognize the tune, he said before beginning to sing. Immediately, I recognized the melody as the familiar 17th century composition Rast Yuruk Semai by Hafez Post, Gelse o Shu Nejlise Nazu Tegaful Eilese. The lyrics describe a Shu, a seductive or coquettish woman who is the object of the narrator's affections. The Hebrew text itself begins with the words, we will sanctify you and revere you, like the pleasant conversation of the assembly of the holy angels that recite holiness thrice before you. As Mr. Asayas softly sang the tune, substituting Hebrew words uh, from the original Ottoman Turkish love poetry, Mr. Balachi began to shake his head in annoyance, making a quiet clucking sound with his tongue. When Asayas finished, exactly. <laughs> Palachi turned to him and said, matter-of-factly, this is a love song. If you want to sing a love song, sing it. But love songs do not belong in tefillah, or prayer, and certainly not in the Kedusha of all things. For Palachi, the system of makam was a cherished musical pillar of synagogue prayer, but the melodic content needed to be improvised or composed specifically for Jewish ritual rather than adapting from secular sources. And yet, Despite Makam's status as the musical framework of Jewish ritual in Istanbul, it is a style that many congregants no longer understand or enjoy. Some people say they have lost the ear to appreciate the complexities of this tradition. Several Hazanim are now trying to preserve a rich, sacred musical heritage that many Turkish Jews no longer appreciate. Certain Hazanim and rabbis have met this challenge by incorporating alternative and diverse Jewish and non-Jewish musics into religious services and other rituals. These include songs from Israel, the United States, and Chabad Hasidic Judaism. Conversely, other Hazanim refuse such conciliations, striving to uphold their musical traditions for as long as they can. At the Etz Achaim Synagogue in Ortake, a younger Hazan, Izet Barokas, is charting his own path. His Kiddushah draws on much more than Ottoman classical tunes. He sets Hebrew texts to selections from Fiddler on the Roof, contemporary Israeli songs, Andrea Bocelli's greatest hits, <laughs> and much more. The congregants respond enthusiastically, singing along to all the tunes they know. In the case of Turkish Jewry, I argue that in this contemporary period, experimentation with Jewish and non-Jewish musics outside the realm of the Ottoman tradition is part of a larger reality. Turkish Jews, especially those engaged in religious pursuits, question the condition of Jewish practice in Turkey today, and what it can or should become. 
Music is one of the primary vehicles for communal prayer. It is a central part of a wide-ranging process in which Turkish Jews are looking beyond the boundaries of local Jewish tradition for musical and religious influences and ideas. At the same time, synagogue musicians understand the importance of local practices for many in the community. The sense of responsibility toward the traditional sacred music of the synagogue captures a larger concern for harmony and communal solidarity. One community leader put it simply, we don't want to divide the community or alienate anyone by bending too far. Izet Barokas explains that he faces a combination of praise and backlash from congregants and fellow Hazanim alike for his musical choices. His supporters, non-religious Jews with little knowledge of liturgical Hebrew and the structure of the service, argue that hearing recognizable music makes them feel grounded and comfortable in unfamiliar territory. More religious detractors complain that all these love songs combined with the beauty of his voice are distracting them uh, from focusing on their prayers. Izet enthusiastically argues that makam can survive if there's a balance. He says, makam is part of who we are and we need to hold on to it. It has the power to alienate people in the community who don't understand it. In Ortaköy, we find the balance. I'm going to play you an example. This is a waltz, famous Turkish waltz, a love song. So finally, I want to talk about one more dimension of contemporary Jewish music making in Istanbul, the presence of the Chabad movement. Chabad is the largest international Jewish outreach movement in the world, with a network of over 3,600 institutions dedicated to the education and welfare of Jewish communities in small towns and cities and on college campuses around the world. Its philosophy and religious practices are rooted in Orthodox Hasidic Judaism, and Hasidic music and spiritual aesthetics have become an important means of religious expression for several newly religious, upwardly mobile Jews in Istanbul's largely Sephardic Jewish community. These community members keep the laws of Shabbat and regularly attend Shabbat lunches at the home of Chabad's emissary in Istanbul, Rabbi Mendi Hitrik. It is at these lunches where they learn a wide repertoire of Chabad Hasidic melodies. Some have grown to appreciate these tunes as much as they do local tradition, if not more in some cases, even arguing that Hasidic melodies are more musically and emotionally resonant for them. The newly religious Jews with whom I conducted field work want so much to live fulfilling, sustainable, and contemporary Jewish lives. For many young Turkish Jews, the drive and passion of the Hasidic repertoire contrasts with what they see as the formality and restraint of Turkish synagogue music. Hasidic music is a vehicle for them to express joy in Judaism that they perhaps no longer know how to channel in local traditional repertoire. For newly observant Jews, the performance of Hasidic music stirs questions of Jewish identity in ways that local Sephardic repertoire perhaps could not. Themes of heritage, faith, Shabbat, and Jewish observance as a goal to strive for were more obviously present in the Hasidic lyrics. Mendi has also translated several songs into Turkish from the original Yiddish so that his Sephardic guests might understand their meaning. 
In this example, I'll only very briefly play uh, a portion. Uh, he sings, If I had the power, I would go out into the night and shout, Shabbat, Shabbat, Shabbat. Originally a Yiddish nigun, a wordless melody, uh, adapted to Yiddish, Mendy sings it in Turkish, then Ladino, then Hebrew, then Yiddish, then in English. The word Shabbat remains the same throughout, reinforcing the idea that these sentiments transcend language, or Ashkenazi or Sephardi heritage. It suggests a narrative of a unified Jewish consciousness that has resonated with guests at his Shabbat lunches. This is uh, the Chabad house in Istanbul, set up, I think, for Passover. Anyway, this is a song that my grandfather sang, my great-grandfather sang, my grandfather, my father sings it, and uh, if you ever sing it in Turkish, I'm singing it on Shabbos, there and continue, conclude for you. All these moments of mixture point to a new reality. Smaller Jewish communities like the one in Istanbul are touched by the global Jewish diversity that exists around them and the ubiquity of Ashkenazi, an Orthodox Jewish culture. We might consider these transgressive acts of play as a kind of experimentation with which, with ways of being that are at once foreign yet still Jewish and familiar. I'm skipping ahead, excuse me. Uh, Jews are lovingly performing Turkishness, Ashkenaziness, Mizrahiness, or Easternness, and other spiritual culture identities in sometimes silly, often poignant ways, substituting Ashkenazi sounding um, uh, pronunciation for Sephardic in, in Hebrew words. I suggest that pride in one's own Turkish Jewishness remains and is reinforced while at the same time appreciation for and curiosity about difference develops. These contrasts are representative of how religious musical life in the community is evolving. Turkish Jews use music and language in multiple contexts of prayer, celebration, study, and dialogue to bring Judaism informed by local history, ethnic identity, and links to Jewish communities around the globe into their everyday experiences. Throughout these practices, they illuminate for themselves and their community what it means and how it feels to be Jewish in Turkey today, and what Turkish Judaism can or should look like in the future. It is not an easy or straightforward process, particularly where long-standing music traditions are concerned. Some Hazanim and community members argue for the reinvention of the synagogue practices that might stimulate and motivate a wider resurgence of religious practice. They argue for looking beyond local tradition for answers, but again in ways that will bend tradition without breaking it. Young Hazanim argue strongly for adaptations to the liturgical music tradition that might energize the community. However, this attitude isn't confined to younger generations alone. One of the community's oldest cantors, Menachem Darsa, once said in an interview with me, I would like our traditional practice to be preserved but tradition should not be an obstacle to prevent new ideas and opportunities. Neither should the Hazan. The question is whether my prayer matters more than yours. I would do anything to make the community more interested in my prayer. Yet for others, the commitment to tradition is too great. In Chief Hazan David Sevi's words, it is our custom, our minhag, it is who we are. How can we change that? Thank you.